destroyed everything. All right, guys, we're back in solo learning in CSS in the CSS3 basics. Let's go ahead and get started here. Introduction to Cascading Style Sheets 3. Um, some of the new features include border radius, border images, multiple backgrounds, animations, and effects. Yes, it is. Is It, it is indeed possible to have multiple backgrounds. Uh, box shadow is another aspect where you can put a shadow behind things. Gradients as well, linear and radial. Gradients are basically taking two colors and then doing something with them. Uh, CSS defines two types of gradients, linear and radial, as we just saw. Um, transforms allow you to rotate, scale, move, and skew elements. So transforms are used quite often. Um, we can kind of drag and drop things and and do things like that on av average. Um, is it animations here? Let me. I have to go back and read this real quick. Um, oh, okay. So transitions are what's used to tra to uh, animate from one value to another. So you like. Transition, you'll see that a lot in a lot of these libraries like Angular Material or um, some or other, or, uh, you know, Bootstrap version 4 where those um, things are already built into your, built into the library. Um, border radius is in Chrome and uh, Safari. Uh, but you need a prefix, excuse me, you need a prefix WebKit for border radius for Safari and Chrome. So you see a couple of webkits here for each each one. Uh, webkit, webkit, moz, dash ms, dash o. Uh, fill in the missing code to support border radius Mozilla Firefox as well. So that was moz dash border radius. Um, you should definitely look up it before doing that to see what browsers support it. Or or don't or just go ahead and test it to find out you give an element rounded corners like this using border radius and setting pixels um, you can do it on various things as well uh, border radius you can do it in part of it all of it it just really depends on what you want to do um, so it goes same way top right left bottom so uh, top top left would be 15 if I remember this correctly that would be that or excuse me top left would be zero and then uh, 15 pixels the bottom left so top right bottom right bottom right is 10 and then we have uh, bottom left is 15 and then uh, top left is 10, 15, 0, and 20. I think I got that right. It would appear that I did not. So let me go back and look at this real quick. So I thought it was going to go right, but I think it goes, yeah, it starts in top left. Top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. Okay. So top left is 0, 15 pixels is the bottom left. So the bottom left is the last one. Uh, bottom right. So 20 and then 10. Cool. Um, you can create a circle so you can do all these sort of things, right? If you put 100 pixels or I believe it's 50%, we'll create a circle. Uh, so the border radius should be 50% of the height and the width and it will basically create a circle. Something to keep in mind. Box shadow. See this shadow around it? That's the box shadow. You're going to need... Um, two pixels and then a color basically um, the offset and then the uh, vertical offset so basically how much to the right do you want it how, or, or the left and how much t above or to the bottom do you want it so we have our box dash shadow and then we want 10 10 pixels I believe it was vertical then horizontal we'll find out right now could have it backwards yes I do so uh, 
it's going to be 20 and 10. So it's horizontal, then vertical. Now, um, you can kind of see it gets a little blurry, right? So uh, you can use blur and spread. So this is blur and then this is spread. Negative value. So, um, like I said, we we're going right or down. If you wanted to go left and uh, top, you could put negatives in there as well. Place the block shadow properties value in the correct order. So, I believe that's it. There we go. Box shadow techniques. You can do it on the inside as well, like so, with using inset. You have to use the inset keywords to get it to look like that. You can do it around the whole thing if you want. Just gotta do inset here once and then inset here once. But notice that it's within the same box property. You're gonna need a comma in between the values. So you can get pretty, uh, pretty intense with this. As you can see right here, we have multiple kind of going on. So you're going to separate them with commas. Transparency. So this is your RGBA uh, sort of things that we were talking about. Um, there's RGB, which is red, green, blue, and there's red, green, blue alpha. So if you want something, if you want like a background color or a button color and you want to be partially see-through, you'd use RGBA and throw it in there. Um, zero is fully transparent. One is fully opaque. Um, goes into a little bit more detail but you see kind of this right here slightly see-through um, so here we're gonna have a border dash top that we want to have a pixel around and then we're gonna have a box shadow what has an inset of zero one pixel and then a bunch of other stuff so you can start combining these very well get very complex very soon so similar to the box shadow you can also put text shadow if you look at our text shadow here you can kind of see the shadow bef before it um so um let's see here down so they've added the blue so 25 and 15 text shadow you can see it gets a little bit you can kind of start adding some colors to it as well and offsetting it and just continues on So you have multiple uh, text shadows similar to box shadows, basically as many as you want. Pseudo classes allow us to style elements or part of elements that exist in the document tree without using JavaScript. So you have first child and last child. What this basically means is you can kind of say like the first one from the parent class. In this case, you have your parent and then the paragraph like so. So basically the first paragraph look look at our example here so the div id here this is our parent class and we're saying look only target the first item the first paragraph right here basically is what that's saying and then you can keep it going as much as you want maybe you want the last child second child all that sort of stuff so uh we want to target the perks uh, element basically just think as um the containers as the parent and the stuff within as children and uh, continuing onward there's pseudo elements um, I'm not too familiar with pseudo elements, so let's see here. There are five pseudo elements. He's starting with a double colon. We have first line, first line of a, of a text and selector. First letter, selection, select it's the portion of element that is selected by the user before some content and last. So that first line and first letter is pretty cool. I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Um, so you're going to need to use the mods prefix to use this, uh, at least at the time this tutorial was made. Uh, first line before heading. I don't think heading was one. So you see right here, you can use this to add a little bit of style, throw in your content. Just kind of showing you an example. Um, P. Add an image prior to the paragraph before. And then the URL like so. So if we want to add an image right before each paragraph, we do it like so. Word wrap is not something I'm really familiar with. Uh, word wrap property allows you to 
allows long words to be broken and wrapped into the next line. It takes two values, normal and break word. In this example below, the word wrap property is set to normal. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we see the name, same example and the word wrap property the break word. It looks like it kind of just wraps down within the uh, container. Okay. So fill in the blanks to fit the text in that. So this was word dash wrap and uh, shit, I forgot what the, the, it was. It was a uh, break word. Uh, word dash wrap break word. <coughs> Excuse me. And then font face. Font face allows custom fonts to be loaded into the web page. Okay. So you see all these sort of font types. All right, dot .ttf and dot .otf and then Internet Explorer because they like to be a pain in the ass is dot .eot. So all of them are supported except EOT and that's for word, uh, that's for IE only. So font family, uh, kind of similar, right? So you font family, you pass it in and then you pass in the source as well. You just do the at font face and you can import it into your CSS. I didn't know this. So this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Just pass in the URL like you would in your HTML documents. Makes sense so that all your styling really should be in here. So it's this was at font dash face, and then we are uh, shit. I, I forgot the syntax already. So that's uh, font dash family source. Okay. So uh, this is font dash face or at font dash face. So you define the property, and then you say uh, I want the name of the font dash family and then the source of where it's located at. Kind of interesting that they broke it up in two parts, but I guess it's a little bit easier to understand. Uh, in the following, what value is given for the bottom right corner? So remember, we're starting top left, top right, bottom right, that would be 30. You use the font face to find a new font in CS3 and fill in the blanks to color the text in the paragraph with the ID my text. So let's go ahead and pass that in. Also add a black shadow, so text-shadow. Um, and then uh, with five pixels to the right and three pixels down, and then go ahead and assign the color. I might have got those pixels in the wrong order. Uh, fill in the blanks of the first line of the paragraph. Usually this is the newly designed font, font family. So again, this is gonna be at font-face. And the source is our URL. And then this was first dash line. And then this was, um, shit, uh, first line, newly defined font called test. I think that's it. And bam, so you see how it all ties together. So up next we'll be doing gradients and backgrounds. Um, lots of cool stuff. I'm going to actually be using that at font face for now on in my videos and as I continue to try and become a better developer and fill in the gaps in my knowledge in CS3, CSS in general. Um, transitions and transformers, I expect to lose, learn a lot as well as gradient and backgrounds. Basically from CS3 and on on, I think there's a lot I'll be learning. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share, and support me on patreon.com slash codenutorials360 and look forward to our weekly developer interviews with tech professionals and software nerds like myself every Friday uh, for Behind the Code. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.